It's pretty evident that any assassin we play as in the entire series is somewhat skilled. But what does skill really mean? It could be anything, from commanding a ship and taking down enemy vessels, to transforming the brotherhood through knowledge, or showcasing impressive combat, stealth, parkour, and even high IQ, plus way more factors. There are so many ways to define what makes somebody skilled. A while back, I made a video ranking the strongest protagonists in the franchise, and I came across a comment suggesting this video idea, ranking every assassin from least skilled to most skilled. Do note that this video will not feature the likes of Cassandra, Alexias, or Eivor. I'm not going to explain why, so I'll leave the reasonings in the hands of comments sense. Just please figure it out. Keep in mind everything I say in this video is just my opinion. So if I rank your favorite assassin lower than you like, remember it's all subjective. Oh and before we dive in, don't forget to subscribe if you have not. I'm on the road to 100,000 subscribers and we are getting closer every day. With that said, let's jump into ranking the most skilled assassins in Assassin's Creed. Starting off at the bottom of this ranking, we have Layla Hassan. Now, I would have said Layla is a pretty important character in the modern day storyline, but let's be honest, she is really not. However, when it comes to being a skilled assassin, because believe it or not, she is or was an assassin, she does not really compare to the rest of the names in this video. She started as a researcher and a tech person in Abstergo, and while she eventually trained in combat and stealth, she did not have the same lifelong experience that most of the other assassins in this video do. You know, you got Altair training as a kid, same with the Fry Twins, but there's Layla, who is probably doing some pretty less exciting things. Her path from being a scientist to becoming an assassin is impressive, but the skills she gained were pretty rushed compared to the others who've been training for years. We don't really see any evolution of it or build up. Combat wise, she can definitely hold her own, but she's nowhere near the level of somebody like Altair, Ezio or even Desmond, who are masters in the art of assassination. Her parkour skills are decent, but not nearly as refined. Her stealth is non-existent because, well, we don't really see any situations of it. Well, unless you count her not being located a few times by Abstergo. Now her strengths lie more in her intelligence and her ability to handle modern technology, like mastering the animus and using pieces of Eden. However, being tech savvy does not necessarily make her the most skilled assassin. So while Layla has her moments like the whole Otso Berg situation, her practical assassin skills keep at the bottom of this video. Now next up we have Jacob Fry, which looking at this video seems pretty low, especially for somebody who is a well established master assassin. Now Jacob is a fun character, with a larger than life personality, but when it comes to raw assassin skills, I'd place him pretty low in this video. Unlike some of the more traditional and refined assassins we've seen in the series, Jacob has a brawler's mentality. You know, he's the type to charge headfirst into a fight without thinking, preferring brass knuckles and brutal combat techniques over quiet, stealthy approaches. You know, being an assassin. Now, to be fair to Jacob, he was trained from a young age by his father, Ethan Fry, in the ways of the Brotherhood, and he does hold the rank of Master Assassin. He's efficient with his hidden blade, and can dispatch targets when necessary, but stealth isn't exactly his strong suit. In fact, I recall Jacob himself admitting once in the game that sneaking around is more his sister Evie Fry's specialty. That's not to say he's completely incapable of stealth, but his brawler-like combat is what really stands out. He's a powerhouse when it comes to hand-to-hand -hand combat, taking down multiple enemies at once with brass knuckles and using brutal takedowns as I said. He's also well equipped for his era, carrying tools like his dual hidden blades, a rope launcher for scaling buildings or creating zip lines, hallucinogenic darts, and an arsenal that includes a cockery blade, a cane sword, and a revolver. His free running skills are impressive as well. He can climb buildings and move around London's rooftops with ease, which is essential for any assassin. But can he do it more efficiently than any of the other assassins in this video? I doubt that. I mean, he did get bested by his own student being Jack the Ripper, and quite easily as well. So yeah, while Jacob is skilled in raw combat, his tendency to favor loud aggressive approaches over stealth limits his ranking. He's also not as serious about the creed compared to Evie Fry. So second last in this video seems fair. I know what you're thinking. How could you place Edward Kenway this low? He's definitely skilled. And yes, you're right, he is. But when I consider everything that makes somebody truly skilled as an assassin, I just don't think he matches up with those higher up in the video. And I'll say the main reason why I think this at the end of his part. Now, Edward Kenway is one of the most unique characters in the series because he did not start off as an assassin or a Templar. He was just a pirate chasing fame and fortune, and only later did he grow into the role of a skilled assassin. His background as a privateer and a pirate gave him a very different set of skills. He's an absolute master of naval warfare and probably the best ship captain in this entire video, commanding the Jackdaw through dangerous waters, fighting waves and winning sea battles is where he really shines. His combat skills are solid too. He's great with weapons, especially dual wielding cutlasses and those iconic flintlock pistols. 
I mean, the man did carry four pistols just to stay ready for a fight. At first, his swordsmanship was pretty average, but training under figures like Edward Thatch turned him into a real master. That said, his fighting style is more about overpowering his opponents than using stealth or strategy. He's better in a full on brawl, but his lack of traditional training is pretty obvious. Edward is definitely agile. He can climb the rigging of a ship or scale a building with no problem. But when it comes to parkour in general, he's not as smooth or well practiced as, you know, your Arnos or your Ezios. So yeah, he's a skill fighter and a great pirate, but as an assassin, he's just not as refined. Plus, he did not exactly have the longest life. Dying shortly after becoming an assassin just doesn't help his case. And honestly, it's quite disappointing how easily he was killed. Yes, we did not visually see it, but from what we can read, he should have been able to defend himself against a few little mercenaries. His early death also meant that he did not have the same impact on the Brotherhood as others did. Alright next up is Adewale. A lot of what I mentioned about Edward Kenway applies to him as well. While Adewale is definitely a respected figure in the Assassin's Creed lore, there is a reason he ranks here when compared to other assassins. His early life was full of hardship, being born into slavery and then escaping and eventually becoming a pirate. He joined Edward on the Jagdo as quartermaster, mastering sword fighting, navigation and even captaining his own ships like the Victoire and the Experto Day. On the sea, Adewale was unmatched. His combat style however leaned heavily on raw strength and brute force. Sure, it was effective, but it lacked the finesse and precision we see from some of the top assassins. Like Edward, he could climb and move smoothly through environments, but his parkour skills were not as refined as others. His weapon choices, which were machetes, blunderbusses and overpowering takedowns were very much influenced by his pirate life. While he knew how to use the hidden blade and had solid stealth abilities, he preferred going head on, which is not exactly the stealthy, calculated approach we expect from most of these skilled assassins. In a way, you know, he's kind of similar to Jacob Fry, but with more credibility. Adewale was dedicated to the cause of freedom, making a huge impact on the Maroon Rebellion by freeing countless slaves and fighting for justice. He also played an important role in building the Brotherhood and mentoring future assassins. But when it comes to raw assassin skill, he wasn't as polished, which is why he falls around this part in the video. Ranking of Azmir is a bit tricky because he's from Assassin's Creed Chronicles India, a 2.5D side scroller instead of a mainland game. This makes it tough to fully evaluate his skills since we don't really see him in the 3D worlds and the environments where most assassins really can show off what they do. That said, Arbazmir is definitely a skilled and clever assassin. Trained to the rank of Master Assassin by Mentor Hamid of the Indian Brotherhood, he's got advanced swordsmanship, solid stealth abilities, smooth free running, and he can handle a variety of unique weapons. In fact, one of them is his trident blade, a modified hidden blade with a pretty cool three-pronged design. It's very innovative and shows his creative side. He's also one of the best assassins at blending in, using disguises to sneak into heavily guarded places, which speaks to his impressive stealth skills. He's known for his charm and humor, often stay calm and cracking jokes even when things get pretty intense. But you know sometimes that confidence can make him a bit too bold. Arbazmir also has a strong moral compass. For example, he saved a slave named Raza from abuse and chose to spare Templar Alexander Burns out of respect. Even though Arbaz is undeniably skilled, it's that 2.5D format of his game that holds him back. His missions are precise and require a lot of planning, but his interactions with the world are more limited. In fact, the next assassin in this video is also in a very similar situation. And that is Nikolai Arolov. Now, of course, he's similar to Arbaz Mir, as I said, because his story is told primarily through the 2.5D gameplay of Assassin's Creed Chronicles Russia and the Assassin's Creed comic series. Since we don't see him in the same environments as mainland protagonists, it's hard to make a direct comparison of his full range of skills. Even so, Nikolai is a skilled and seasoned assassin. He's a complete master with firearms, especially his Burdan rifle, making him a lethal long-range marksman. His survival skills are quite insane, and I'm not exaggerating. I mean, he even made it out of the Tunguska explosion alive, which wiped out an entire region, and he managed to return home safely. You know, in terms of skill, I like to say that level of resilience and mental strength is impressive enough, and it very obviously shows throughout his missions in his 2.5D game. In terms of combat, his fighting style is quite gritty and definitely efficient. He gets the job done, unlike uh, someone such as Jacob Fry. Oh yeah, and a lot of his fighting is influenced and shaped by the hardships of his life and the trauma of losing his first child, which made him a dark or more brutal fighter. He's for sure skilled in stealth, free running and melee combat and he makes good use of his hidden blade, a saber and whatever improvised weapons he can get his hands on. What makes Nikolai Arulov especially skillful is his disillusionment with the Assassin Brotherhood. He's motivated by his own sense of justice instead of any unwavering loyalty to the creed and this inner conflict adds quite a lot of depth to his character. Now while Nikolai's skills make him a strong assassin, again just like Arbaz Mir, the limitations of his 2.5D betrayal and his story's focus on personal loss and betrayal make him stand apart from the more classic mainline assassins.
Okay, now this is the last obscure assassin for quite a while. And now we have Aveline. Now, Aveline, if you somehow don't know, is from Assassin's Creed Liberation. And the whole journey is similar in a few ways to Adewale, in that its themes are freedom and justice, but this time in the 18th century New Orleans. Aveline was fueled by a desire to liberate the oppressed and fight the Templar's hold on Louisiana and join the Louisiana Brotherhood of Assassins, training under her mentor Agate. Now, what sets her apart from others in terms of skill is her versatility. Aside being a surprisingly very good fighter, like seriously a very good fighter, she's also quite literally a master of disguise, able to move quite smoothly between different worlds, from the oppressed masses to the highest levels of society. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, I'm talking about her use of personas, you know, the assassin, the lady and the slave, which allows her to infiltrate, charm and incite riots, making her missions in liberation feel a lot more unique. Now in terms of combat, Aveline is no slouch, even though she may look like it. She wields dual hidden blades, a whip, which I think is her signature weapon, I could be mistaken, and she can even take down enemies with a blowpipe or her parasol turned weapon, which is a crazy weapon to even have. Her agility is also impressive, with parkour skills that let her move around both urban and natural landscapes, swinging from trees and scaling buildings with complete ease. But with all positives, there are negatives. Despite her impressive versatility, her skill set comes with some limitations, her combat style leads more towards improvisation and raw effectiveness instead of you know being a refined assassin. Her missions are quite diverse and require clever strategy and she's not really as polished or specialized as some of the other iconic assassins above her in this video. Plus her relationship with her mentor Agate was filled with way too much conflict and mistrust which in reality I would say held her back from achieving her full potential. Okay, is this considered controversial? I have no idea. But, you know, I'm gonna go with Desmond Miles, which I feel fits right in the video. In fact, I was planning to place him way higher. But, you know, ranking Desmond over some iconic assassins did not feel right. So this is a confusing one. Unlike many other assassins on this list, Desmond did not spend his whole life mastering combat or honing his parkour skills. Instead, his abilities came from years of training at the farm, only to be abandoned when he ran away to live a regular life as a bartender. Yet, thanks to the animus and the bleeding effect, Desmond very quickly absorbed the skills of legendary assassins like Altair, Ezio and Connor. So, you know, technically, you could say he has all of their skills combined. Now, combat-wise, Desmond is surprisingly competent. By the end of Assassin's Creed 3, he's fighting off Templar agents and security guards with ease, using hand-to-hand -hand combat, a hidden blade and even modern firearms like the Silence MK23 pistol that he acquired from Daniel Cross. His ability to take down multiple well-trained enemies showcases just how effective the bleeding effect was at transferring centuries of fighting techniques to him. But let's face it, these skills are borrowed, not built through years of personal experience like his ancestors. Another thing that surprised me a lot was his parkour abilities. He very quickly adapted to free running, performing moves like the leap of faith and scaling tall ass skyscrapers as if he'd been doing it for his whole life. But again, he doesn't have the same fluidity or precision as somebody like Arno who spent his entire life perfecting these skills. His stealth abilities, while it's decent, does not really stand out compared to the finesse of others on this list. Now where Desmond truly shines is in his mental fortitude. He made the ultimate sacrifice to save humanity, which speaks to his strength and dedication. Still, in terms of raw self-earned assassin skill, he doesn't quite reach the top. Now let's talk about the other Fry twin that is way ahead of skill in my opinion, and that is Evie Fry, an assassin who actually wants to be an assassin. Evie is easily one of the best assassins of the Victorian era, and there were quite a few heavy hitters back then. Compared to Jacob, who's always rushing headfirst into chaos, Evie takes the creed a lot more seriously. She's the kind of assassin who believes in doing things the quote unquote right way, and yeah, she does end up cleaning a lot of Jacob's messes. Instead of getting into fistfights, she uses her environment and some pretty clever tools to get the job done. Her hidden blade skills are second to none, and she's got a pretty badass arsenal. Smoke bombs, hallucinogenic darts, a cane sword, and her signature rope launcher. You know, the exact same as Jacob, but instead of the, you know, cockery, it's a cane sword. Her signature style comes with the use of the rope launcher, which improves her mobility, allowing her to very quickly traverse the rooftops of London and create opportunities to strike from above. She's also got this deep knowledge of the Brotherhood's history and a major focus on the pieces of Eden, which makes her a pretty key person. She's somebody that is very serious about keeping those artifacts away from the Templars. And even though she's super strict about the creed, Evie's got a compassion aside. You see it when she's helping out people like Florence Nightingale and Charles Darwin, doing whatever she can to make London a better place. What's also interesting is after her adventures in London, her story does not end. She relocates to India and continues to serve the Brotherhood, learning new skills from the Indian assassins and adopting non-lethal techniques. I guess if there was going to be a negative, it would be her physical strength. She's not exactly on the same level of Connor or Jacob in terms of strength, and that's uh, self-explanatory the way the world works, right?
Oh boy, Bayek Kavsiwa, one of my favorite assassins in the entire series. Oh yeah, and just a heads up, from this point on in the video, every one of these assassins are highly skilled, with not as many flaws compared to the previous ones. Now Bayek has got skills for days, and it's no wonder considering he was a Magi before becoming the co-founder of the Hidden Ones. Firstly, Bayek was trained from a very young age. As I said, he was a Magi, which means he was a guardian, a defender, and a peacekeeper, which also meant he had to be proficient with a wide range of weapons, from bows and arrows to swords and shields to heavy weapons, you name it. This constant training from his youth gave him an edge, not only in combat, but in his survival skills. Also think about it, the deserts of Egypt are not exactly the nicest, so being able to navigate around, handle life-threatening situations, and all of that meant he was pretty tough and adaptable. We witness his skill in brutal combat scenarios, like when he storms heavily guarded fortresses, or faces off against multiple soldiers at once with absolute precision. Even the whole Trial of the God stuff, which sure is technically animus glitches. Now the problem with Bayek is that his game is an open world, so that means stealth and parkour are very very hard to factor in. Because when the hell in Origins do we ever witness stealth or parkour? I mean it's a massive empty desert. I guess you could say some missions like Medina Moon in the Temple of Amun, stealth is quite good there. Oh yeah, and uh, how could I almost forget? Bayek laid the groundwork for the Brotherhood. Unlike assassins who joined an already established order, Bayek was the one that built the Brotherhood from scratch alongside Aya. This means he has a deep understanding of what it means to be an assassin, and he knows the ways of the creed inside and out. His dedication to protecting the innocent and fighting for freedom is not just something he was taught, it's something he believes in with every fibre of his being. Now next up we have Basim, and as of me making this video, he's the most recent assassin in the series. He's also easily one of the most compelling characters, and his skills make him a standout assassin. Now Basim is a master manipulator and strategist which might sound strange to mention, but he's an assassin that doesn't charge into situations blindly. He carefully plays the long game, using both charm and intellect to get what he wants. In fact, when you think of what his strongest aspect is in terms of skill, it's not combat, it's not parkour, I'd say it's easily his IQ and knowledge. I mean, the fact that he's even got a connection with Loki, the Norse god, is a big reason too. It gives him a deep well of knowledge and insight into both the supernatural and the human worlds, which in terms of skill is a big skill set to have. His combat skills are good as well, blending traditional hidden one techniques like the hidden blade with more creative approaches. Now spoiler warning for Valhalla's ending in 3, 2, 1. We do see a great example with the whole boss fight scene in Valhalla, which shows you just how fast and manipulative he is. Again, manipulation is a strange thing to mention for a skill set, but it is a real one to have. I'm not saying you guys should be manipulating people, but you know, you get the idea. I think. Oh yeah, and you can even say his ability to strategize also comes into play when he mentors others, like his apprentice Hytham, showing that he's not just a lone wolf but a pretty influential person in the Brotherhood. On top of all of that, Basim is relentless. When he sets his mind on something like hunting down the Order of Ancients or seeking revenge against Odin, he goes all in. His motivations are driven by a very complicated mix of personal vendetta and loyalty to the Hidden One's cause, making him not just skilled but also one of the most interesting characters to follow. You know, as strange as this sounds, pure strength is the best skill to have, and the fact that Kana is, in my opinion, the strongest assassin by far in the series is pretty impressive. Well, maybe Yasuke could be, if he ever decides to join the Brotherhood, but I doubt that happens. Anyway, for Kana, growing up as somebody that faced a life of struggle and loss really shaped who he became. Witnessing his mother's tragic death and the cruel burning of his village, this all made him into a truly skilled person. All that pain transformed into strength, and he worked relentlessly to become a skilled hunter and protector, mastering the wilderness with incredible agility and precision. It also helped that living among the Kanyan Kahaka tribe gave Kana abilities that made him unique. He developed amazing free running skills, moving through treetops and rugged landscapes as naturally as scaling city rooftops. From a young age, he trained in tracking, hunting and combat, making him a deadly force with a bow, a tomahawk and his deep knowledge of survival skills. His bond with nature and spiritual journey even granted him mystical powers, like the wolf cloak and eagle flight, which added another level to his already impressive set of skills. I guess you could say that it was not real, but it still happened in the game. Even when Achilles took Kana under his wing, he sharpened those raw talents into something extraordinary. He learned to master stealth, wield the hidden blades, and fight with incredible efficiency, often dual wielding a tomahawk and dagger to devastating effect. He also became a skilled sailor, turning the Aquila into an important weapon for defending the American coast. His adaptability in both land and sea warfare were very instrumental, especially in the colonial assassin struggle against the Templars. I used to be somebody that did not like Connor's character at all, but when you realize after all the personal tragedies he's endured, he's a very complex character. He never gave up hope for a better world. His commitment to freedom, paired with his insane combat abilities and connection to nature, are all big reasons for being so skilled. 
Okay, you might be thinking, why on earth have I just featured Naoi, even though Shadows is not even out? But just know that this part right here is a prediction. I have a feeling that Naoi is going to be a very, very skilled assassin. Somebody very good at parkour, stealth, combat, and just an overall skilled assassin. I'd say she'd be similar to Xiao Jun, but maybe with less flair. So yeah, this is just a prediction, so pay no mind to it. Now at 4th place, I've gone with Arnold Dorian as the most skilled. Now Arno is a strange assassin to rank because some people including myself don't really find his character that appealing but as a skilled assassin he is definitely up there for sure. He grew up in the chaos of the French revolution experiencing profound losses that shaped his journey. He was orphaned at a young age and adopted by a Templar family which pretty much set the stage for a life full of contradictions and conflict. In terms of pure combat his skills are very impressive. Honed from sparring with his childhood friend and love interest Elise and later refined under the tutelage of the master assassin Pierre Bellic. And speaking of Pierre Bellic, his one-on-one -on -one fight against him to take him down highlighted just how skillful he was because Bellic was not a pushover type of assassin. You know, when I think of Arno as an assassin, I think of how agile and swift he is, often using the environment to his advantage in fights. His fencing skills were unmatched and he could fight against multiple opponents with ease. But what made Arno truly dangerous though is his adaptability. He learned to wield heavy weapons like pistols, rifles and even the powerful Sword of Eden which he claimed from Francois Thomas Germain. Now the real skill of Arno is quite evidently in his parkour abilities. Now I'm not saying Unity is the best game for parkour. If you watch my ranking of the parkour video then you know my thoughts on that whole situation. But Arno's parkour skills are incredible. His agility in climbing and especially leaping for some reason made him an efficient and stealthy predator. He's easily one of the fastest assassins in the series when it comes to straight up free running. Now despite his turbulent past and the inner battles he's faced, a skill that I can respect is maturity. You see Arno has matured into a wise and independent assassin. His leadership skills were quite evident as he took on big missions to liberate Paris from Templar control. Through the years, he gained a reputation not only for his combat and parkour but also for his insight into the flaws of both the assassins and the Templars, always aiming to bridge the gap between the two orders. And now at third place, we have the most popular, the most loved and the most iconic protagonist in the entire series and that is Ezio Auditore da Firenze. Skilled is an understatement to describe Ezio. His journey spans decades, providing unparalleled depth to his character and his mastery of the assassin's craft. Yes, I guess him having a trilogy plays a gigantic role in being skilled because we saw his entire life, which is something we cannot say for the rest of the assassins in the video. From his early days as an immature and inexperienced young man in AC2 to his refined and introspective role as a mentor in Revelations, Ezio demonstrates remarkable growth in not just skill but also philosophy. By the time of Brotherhood, Ezio had already become a master assassin and a leader of the Italian Brotherhood, honing all sorts of skills. He wielded a pretty big arsenal such as dual hidden blades, a wrist mounted crossbow, a poison dart launcher and even a hidden pistol. His ability to blend these tools into his combat and assassination techniques reflects his skill and adaptability. There's also his parkour. The Ezio trilogy is easily my favourite iteration of parkour in the series and combining speed and precision allowed Ezio to dominate urban environments like Florence, Venice and Rome. When it comes to pure combat, it's obvious to say his combat has evolved into a refined and elegant art form. In Revelations, he showcased just how skilled he really was despite being older than usual. In fact, it did not even look like Ezio in that game was in his mid 50s. There's also the addition of the hook blade that improved his already impressive free running and allowed for brand new combat techniques. Apart from physical skills and parkour skills, there is also his leadership. You know, he rebuilt the assassin brotherhood in Italy and restored the influence. Furthermore, his personal journey of loss, revenge and self-discovery shaped him into a wiser and more compassionate leader by the end of his life. Now let's talk about the final assassin in the Chronicles trilogy and that is Xiao Jun. Now Xiao Jun's spot of the second most skilled is not just for show, it's because of her incredible versatility, adaptability and just being an overall badass. First off, Xiao Jun did not just fight through some of the most difficult circumstances in her life, she practically danced through them and I mean that literally. Her combat style which is heavily influenced by the grace and fluidity of Chinese Washu martial arts turned every fight she did into a lethal performance, earning her the nickname Dance of Death. I just hope one day we do get a mainline game featuring her because out of Ar Bazmia, Nikolai Arilov and Xiao Jun, it's Xiao Jun to me that deserves it the most. She was also a true innovator too. She was unhappy with the traditional hidden blade design. So what did she do? She went ahead and created her own hidden foot blade, making her combat style even more unique and efficient. And if that wasn't cool enough, she also developed and created something that you might know as the rope dart, a weapon that later became a staple among assassins like Edward Kenway and Connor. Xiao Jun wasn't just following the creed, she was shaping it and not many people realize it. But 
it's not just about her weaponry or fighting style, she was also a very very good strategic powerhouse. Her journey back to China to rebuild the entire brotherhood after it was nearly wiped out by the Templars shows her unbreakable resolve and leadership. Even at one point being mentored by Ezio Aditore, she was somebody that didn't just survive, she thrived, taking down powerful Templar enemies known as the Eight Tigers, even preventing a Mongol invasion at the Great Wall of China. And let's not forget, she rebuilt the entire Chinese brotherhood from the ground up, ensuring its survival for generations to come. Xiao Jin also had an exceptional gift for stealth and agility, making her almost ghost-like when infiltrating enemy strongholds or taking out high-profile targets. So she's easily one of the most skilled assassins in the entire brotherhood. And finally, at the number one spot for the most skilled assassin in Assassin's Creed, I'm gonna have to go with Altair. From his general abilities of core assassin skills to his sheer scope of his accomplishments, Altair represents the very essence of the Brotherhood in its purest form. We all should know that stealth, combat and parkour are the backbone of being an assassin, and Altair excelled in all three. You know, canonically, during the events of the first game, Altair was never not once touched in combat. I mean, that right there just speaks to a level of precision and skill unmatched by any other assassin in this video. Well, maybe not Xiao Jun. I think she's kind of similar to Altair. Altair moved like a ghost, vanishing into crowds or executing flawless assassinations without a trace. His parkour skills were unparalleled for his time, enabling to move around towering crusader cities with ease. In terms of combat skills, Skill, Altair was equally lethal. You know, despite only wielding the tools available in the 12th century, which were very limited, he defeated countless enemies, like Templars wielding an Apple of Eden, using only his intellect and skill with a blade. Perhaps what truly sets him apart though is his dedication to the creed. When you think of the word assassin, it's hard not to immediately think of Altair. He quite literally embodies that word. All we know of as fans is simply Altair as an assassin. In fact, that's really all the first game is, Assassin's Creed. He became a master assassin at 25, the youngest in the Brotherhood's history. Actually, I think Basim might have taken that title now. Another thing to mention is that Altair was stripped of his rank for a big mistake. He fought his way back, proving his skill and commitment. Later, he restructured the Brotherhood, blending the wisdom of the Apple of Eden with his own understanding of justice. Even into his 80s, Altair was still actively fighting and mentoring, reclaiming Masia from Abbas Sophian and leading with unmatched wisdom. You know, he's what a definitive assassin is supposed to be. He did not have the fancy tools of later assassins like Ezio's hidden gun or Arno's phantom blade, but this lack of gadgets only amplifies his brilliance. He achieved greatness with nothing but his blade and his belief in the creed. In fact, when you think of all of those inventions in the later games, it was probably Altair that wrote all of that in his codex to be passed on to generations. So that's the hidden gun, the need to no longer remove the ring finger, the use of poison. All of this was Altair. So yeah, number one is easily Altair. So there we have it, this was a pretty long video, especially for just talking about skilled assassins, but hey we go pretty in depth here. I try not to make videos that are like 10 to 12 minutes long, because there is not enough time to say everything in such a short span of time, but hey we got there in the end. Also I'll say it again, Xiao Jun deserves a mainline game. Now what are your thoughts on my ranking? Who do you think is the most skilled if it's not Altair? Let me know down in the comments below. Anyway if you did enjoy this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button, and with all of that said, I'll see you in the next one.